Unetlana, we come to you in prayer today. We give you thanks for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to come together, to share with one another, to lift each other up, help each other out. Pray that you please be with those who are ill today, who are fighting COVID, who are fighting other illnesses. Pray that you please put your hand over them, bring them comfort, bring them strength so that they, they can heal and so that they can recover. And we just pray that you please help us all to come together as Cherokee people, as Oklahomans and as Americans, that we can come together and, and, and reach out and help each other out and lift each other up. And um, we just thank you for all of the blessings that we have. And um, thank you for this day. What a, amen. Well, I appreciate everyone being here. Um, I, I'm not usually a part of these on the live, but I wanted to make sure that uh, you guys know how much we appreciate your participation and uh, that, uh, you know, Abraham, I just fill out his 90 day evaluation. And uh, so he, he's doing a great job and we're proud of him and, and look forward to, uh, to, to more great things from him. So uh, make sure and reach out to him. If you need anything, uh, he's assisting Donnie a lot. I also wanted to say that uh, starting today, for those um, that that join us on these Thursday events live, we will be um, drawing names and uh, sending out sending out a couple of uh, door prizes for you, uh, just so that we show our appreciation that you join us live. So with that, um, Abraham, take it away. All right. See you only God. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I want to thank you guys, uh, say what oh, for joining us today. And, um, you know, we, I know in the country, you know, we had a, a, a lot of things happen yesterday and there's a lot still happening today, but, um, you know, I just, I'm really excited about the strength of our people who are able to weather storm after storm, you know, adversity after adversity, and still um, keep going, you know, and still, um, you know, just help each other out. You know, I, I really believe we have more in common, you know, um, than, than we have differences. So, um, you know, even though there's a lot going on, I just want to thank you guys for being here. I know you guys could be anywhere. And, uh, you know, just appreciate you guys sharing this time with us. And uh, like Kevin said, uh, you know, I'm here, you know, um, to help out in any way I can um, for our, you know, turkeys here on the reservation and our turkeys who are at large. So if you guys ever need any um, programming you want to see or classes or, you know, have any needs, you know, just make sure, you know, for you for sure reach out. Um, you know, and I, I just want to say once again, thanks for having us. So today, um, the topic we're going to talk about is why representation matters, reducing the impact of negative stereotypes and misconceptions about Cherokee people. Uh, Donnie's on another call today, um, this morning. She's with um, uh, on the culture committee and uh, she'll be joining us later, I believe. But um, I'm gonna say what oh to Kevin, uh, the director of our department for uh, getting us going today. So, We talk about why representation matters. What is representation? I'm sure you know everybody's familiar with representation. I'll just go over the definition really quick. The basic definition of representation in the media is simply how media such as television, film, and books portray certain types of people or communities. Representation matters so that the full story can be told. And so you don't have a one-sided story that isn't a fair representation of native people. Now, recently, I've heard a lot of people say that representation isn't enough, you know, that um, people try to buy us off with representation saying, okay, well, we'll, we'll let you be on this committee or we'll give you, you know, this directorship here or, you know, we have uh, um, natives in Congress, that that's not enough. But, you know, I understand the frustration with a lot of people who are looking for a lot more progress, but um, representation does matter. 
um, especially in the media, you know, and in books, on film, uh, because a lot of people, you know, don't get to meet natives every day. So that the only access and opportunity they have to uh, learn from native people is oftentimes what they see on TV. And so we're gonna look through some of the presentation today and um, see how that representation or misrepresentation does have real world uh, consequences. So, uh, you know, as you can see here, you know, um, Adam Sandler and his, his um, get up there, um, you know, it, it does matter how we are represented, you know, so. Um, um, here we have the now infamous CNN poll. And, um, you know, that really shined a new light on how native people are not well represented in, in the media. A lot of people um, took umbrage, you know, with this poll us being labeled as something else. You know, it is a testament, however, to our ability to find humor in these instances, uh, but we do um, recognize for the need for change. I've seen, uh, you know, sweatshirts now with something else on them. I am something else, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, natives, we, uh, we rely on a lot on our humor. Uh, you know, it's, it's really, um, I think, a really good attribute that we have, um, you know, to be able to laugh at things, uh, but it is serious. We and we do recognize that, you know. Even even though we do um, find humor in these things, we do recognize that um, there is a need for more native representation um, on a national scale. So um, you know, it, this just you know brought up again. You know, my whole life I've had to check the box of other. You know, I've had to check the box of you know something else. You know what? It, or we're labeled something else there. Um, you know, you don't always have, you know, fall into a box, you know, um, I think a lot more recently now there is, um, you know, better representation, at least on forms, you're able to put that you are native and um, a lot of times put what tribe you are. So um, that's good. That's progress. So why representation matters. Native Americans experience relative invisibility in the media. When they are included, they generally are portrayed as historical figures, individuals from the 18th and 19th century who wear buckskin, ride horses, or live in teepees. When they are shown as modern people, they are often associated with addiction, poverty, and a lack of formal education. So we all know that this isn't true, you know, as Native people. But, uh, you know, I get asked this uh, a lot. You know, I've traveled the, the country and a lot of people who aren't Native are really ignorant about um, how we live, how we lived, um, you know, pre-contact. We, we all, um, you know, they all have this image of, I think, Plains Indians a lot of times, and they associate us with that. So what we need is we need more contemporary stories about us by us. Uh, one of the things that always annoyed me going to school was I had non-natives teaching me native history. Uh, they would teach me, you know, about my ways, you know, and, and my customs. And, you know, they are well-intentioned people. I appreciate the fact that somebody's teach, that somebody at least wanted to teach it. But what, what I want to see is more stories about us by us. So more Cherokee authors, um, you know, more Cherokee filmmakers, more Cherokee directors, more Cherokee musicians. Um, you know, I'm really... You know, I watched the presentation that Cynthia Ruiz gave to our youth yesterday, and she maxed out at 100 people. And um, to see all of the youth who are interested in being leaders and you know, who are interested and, in, you know, who have all these goals and dreams, that gives me hope. And so, you know, I think it's our responsibility now to give the youth the tools that they need to continue to build on the gains that our ancestors made, um, the gains that our generation is making, and then you know to see what they're going to do next. Um, it's really exciting. So, um, you know, um, while this is a lot of, uh, you know, maybe cause con for concern um, or how we're represented a lot of times, uh, I, I have hope that it's going to get better. So I think also what a lot of people don't understand is Native history is American history. Um, I would like to see a better job in our schools um, 
you know, instead of, I believe a lot of times it's taught separate. Native history is taught, you know, as this, you know, before America and, you know, America happened in spite of natives. And that's not really true. The, everything you see now from our government, you know, to um, a lot of our culture has been shaped by native people. And our contribution, um, instead of keeping that separate, I think it needs to be included more in American history, um, you know, to, to show that we, we are Americans, you know, and it all started with the contributions that our people made. Uh, when Native Americans are included in media depictions, they are usually shown as a particular type of Native American, for example, as Sioux, Navajo, or Apache. This narrow representation does not reflect the wide diversity among the hundreds of tribal cultures that exist within the borders of the United States. So people do not realize that there are over 500 uh, different tribes, each, each with its own distinct language and culture. And like I said, we're all aware of that. But um, you know, I would like to see better representation in media of, um, you know, different tribes of, of Cherokee, um, you know, of Seminole, of, of Creek, um, you know, of, of the, and you know, one of the things I, or one of the reasons I know this is a big deal is because in my travels, I would come across tribes I had never heard of. And it was just astonishing to me that I wasn't taught more in, you know, I was taught by my family because you know they were on Alcatraz um, with a lot of different tribes. My uncle um, was at Wounded Knee um, helping out up there. So I was taught by my family, but I think you know um, our school system um, should do a better job of teaching us about all the distinct um, tribes that are out there. So um, it's just really awesome to see, to go on my travels and see all of the different tribes and experience their culture, to hear their language spoken. Um, it's just really awesome. The lack of accurate representation is heightened by the fact that the average U.S. Resident's, resident experiences nearly no direct daily interaction with Native Americans. Only 14 states have Native populations that exceed 100,000 people. Nearly one-fourth of Native people live on reservations. So those who do not live near Native people must rely on the media to get their information about us. And that's why um, representation um, you know, in newspaper, film, books, um, et cetera, that's why it is so important, because that is the only time um, a lot of people, um, you know, will be exposed to natives or native culture. And if it is an inaccurate depiction, um, it really does a lot of harm. Um, I remember watching Dave Chappelle um, one time, and he talked about driving through um, the Southwest. And, uh, you know, when you drive through there, you, you do um, come across a lot of natives. And he was just saying how shocked he was to, to see a lot of natives, how you don't see that. You know, there are no native TV shows where you see a native family or, or anything like that. So, you know, just to see, hear his shock, you know, that there are actually a lot of us. And, um, you know, that's just one of the, the indicators that um, we do need more representation. Inaccurate negative media depictions have psychological consequences. For example, exposure to common media portrayals has been shown to have a harmful impact on Native American high school students, feelings about themselves, their community, and their academic possibilities. So studies have shown that Native mascots have harmful impacts on you. Um, how do I know that? Because it negatively impacted me. Uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, get caught up in, I think, the politics surrounding uh, mascots, um, you know, and they don't want to be, they, they view it as being told what to do or, or something like that. And then you have the groups who, you know, I'm native and not offended, um, who will always come to their rescue. And, uh, you know, the, the fact of the matter really is, you know, for myself, if I find, I see something that's offensive to another group of people, you know, whether it's a hundred people or one person, I'm not going to share that. It's just, um, I think it's just common sense and decency, uh, you know, and the harm it does is, you know, you see here, you have the uh, mascot, I think it was for the fight, fighting a lion eye. There is no, uh, you know, there isn't good representation when they have those mascots, you know, they always put up the same kind of caricature and, um, you know, it's kind of, you know, like the Washington Redskins, you know, that's, and that's both supposed to represent all natives, all 500 and some odd tribes. 
and it doesn't. So that just shows it's not a good uh, representation. And then, you know, the other thing that I find, the issue I find with native mascots is then you have people dressing up. So then you have the other side, you know, who are saying, well, you know, we have to scalp the natives. You know, if you have a team that's the, you know, the Redskins, the, the other team will also say scalp the Redskins or, you know, let's send them on a trail of tears or, and it just, it really does get out of hand. And, you know, they say that they are trying to honor people with these mascots, but um, I, I, for myself, you know, I never felt honored by it. It always bugged me because I felt like any other group or any other race um, would not um, be open, would not be subjected to that kind of treatment, I felt like. And so I am happy. Uh, we are making progress. The, the Washington Redskins have decided to uh, drop their mascot. And I think it's just the beginning of, of all of them, you know, being dropped. Um, because I think it, it, it changes the discussion. If you want to have a discussion about native people or, you know, and, and, and our culture, I think there's a different venue for that, that, um, you know, and, and I'm excited to share our culture, you know, with non-natives. Um, you know, anytime I'm asked about anything, I'm happy because I do, um, you know, we are fellow Americans and I'm, I'm happy to show that uh, we do have more in common um, than, than our differences. So um, I am happy to share that. I just think that native mascots is not the venue to do it. Media depictions of Native Americans can influence how Native people see themselves. Some may be motivated to identify with representations, even if they are inaccurate, simply because one representation is better than no representation. So this adds to the importance of, you know, accurate portrayals of Natives. And, you know, for a lot of our Native um, youth who may, you know, live in urban areas, who may not live on the reservation, who may not have access to their culture, they're being subjected to these inaccurate portrayals also. You know, so a lot of times they may follow the stereotype just because they, that's all they know, you know, about being native. And so um, that is dangerous then to have those inaccurate depictions out there. Um, you know, for me, one of the, you know, the biggest um, turning points in my life was whenever I did learn that in the Declaration of Independence, we are called merciless Indian savages. You know, and it's just, um, I remember whenever I found out, I mean, it blew my mind, you know, and it's just, um, you know, that's one of the things also, you know, um, we have to make sure we get better representation, um, you know, because, you know, in this government document, here we are, um, you know, being called out. And, um, you know, it's, it cannot stand, you know, and, and so, you know, I would be, more than, you know, I would more than welcome, you know, a, um, you know, some type of legislation or, or anything, you know, even if, um, you know, to have this be addressed and have it to, to, to not let it just stand and not have any commentary about it from um, any, from Congress or, or any of our leaders, um, you know, so that's just one instance um, that I don't feel like we are, are well represented. And that just goes to show you uh, the misrepresentation of Indian people, of Native people, has been going on um, for hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, you know, a, a lot of times in books, a long time ago, we were depicted as savages, you know, um, and it made people fearful of us. And it was a political move, you know, it made us easier to, um, you know, it made people look at us as less than human. So when things happened like termination policy or, you know, the um, relocation or, you know, um, you know, forced removal, you know, those types of policies, it was easier to enact those on us when people, um, you know, when Americans didn't have an accurate representation of, of our culture, um, you know, and weren't able to see that we are, were in fact a sophisticated people um, with our own um, working systems, education systems, um, family systems. And so, um, you know, it just goes to show that this has been going on for a long time. And even though it is getting better, um, we do have a, a little ways to go. So let's look at some of the misconceptions um, about Cherokee people. Uh, one of the biggest ones nowadays I see is that DNA, DNA testing can prove your Cherokee. Um, I see this a lot and um, you know, 
it has to be addressed. I think, you know, I think there's a proper venue to do it, but I would like to see this addressed more and more so that, um, that people understand that this isn't in fact true. You can't take a test and in, in fact be Cherokee. Um, all natives get per cap and are wealthy. Um, this is another uh, misconception. Um, and I hear it a lot actually. Uh, in my travels, you know, a lot of people will come up to me and say, um, well, you know, it must be nice not to have to worry about money. And, uh, you know, that would be nice. But, um, you know, I'm not one of those um, people, you know, and the, the, I think the thing people don't realize is that the tribes that do get per cap, um, they, they don't have very member, many tribal members. So, um, you know, it's, it's um, that's sad also, you know, so. Um, Cherokees are trying to steal Oklahoma state land. That's a misconception. Um, this was actually Indian territory um, before it was the state of Oklahoma. And I think people um, need to be taught that um, better. With the McGirt ruling, I think a lot of people have panicked, um, but there isn't, isn't no uh, need to panic. We aren't trying to steal the entire state. Um, so I think there needs to be a better job uh, to explain that to people. The I am Cherokee and not offended group speaks for everyone. So I see this a lot, you know, um, anytime there's a big issue that comes up, um, you'll see somebody who gets on there and says, um, well, I'm native and you know, it doesn't offend me. And then the other side will point to them and say, look, see, we told you that, you know, you guys were just, um, you know, making fun of it. Um, you guys were just, um, you know, being snowflakes and everything else that they say, but you know, one person doesn't speak for the entire tribe. Um, that's not how it works. So I think if we could get rid of that misconception, that would be um, really helpful. If you don't look like a Cherokee, then you must not be. Um, I see this a lot. Um, you know, people will say, well, you don't look Indian or you don't look native. And, uh, you know, people will jokingly say, well, I'm sorry, I, I parked my buffalo in back. Um, but you know, that's a misconception, you know, that you have to look a certain way um, to be able to be Cherokee. So what are some of the ramifications of this? This has led to many people claiming um, Cherokee heritage and citizenship. And that has led to the fact that there are now over 200 bogus Cherokee tribes. Um, you see this pop up a lot. And, um, you know, I think this can be traced back to the fact that the misconception that People can just be claimed being Cherokee um, when, in fact, you you do have to be enrolled. Um, you know that we we govern our membership. So um, it does um, you know develop hostility between um, Cherokee and non-tribal members when um, you know politicians or whoever um, you know put out you know these things you know especially about the McGirt ruling you know, saying that we are trying to take over Oklahoma, you know, and these types of things, um, you know, it's unhelpful and uh, does create hostility. So this attitude leaves us open to continued poor representation. Um, if you have the people who get on all the time and say, well, I'm not offended, this doesn't offend me. Um, you know, you, you don't take, take into account your fellow tribal members. This, this may hurt them, you know, this may hurt our youth. So um, it would be good if we were able to think about those things you know, before we go out and, you know, comment on whatever, you know, as representatives of Cherokee people. Um, so the, the thing about looking native, um, that it came up recently in an ICWA case, um, those seeking to adopt native children mentioned racial identifiers rather than tribal membership as justification for adoption. So the, some people who were trying to adopt a native child, uh, they mentioned the fact that the child didn't look native. So therefore they didn't have to go by the fact that they were in an, actually an enrolled uh, member of Choctaw Nation. And that's just not the case, uh, you know, and we all know that, you know, like I said, but it would be good if, you know, we have to get these um, misconceptions, um, you know, addressed because they do have real life consequences. And, uh, you know, so, um, so some stereotypes um, about Cherokee people. A lot of people think that Cherokee lived in teepees. I don't know who, if any of you guys have um, ever heard that, but I've definitely been asked that um, a lot. A lot of people think that we still live in teepees, actually. And so um, that's definitely not true. 
the myth of the Cherokee princess. I don't know if any of you guys have ever, um, you know, a lot of times um, my last name is Bearpaw. So I'll go to the bank or I'll go wherever. And anytime I have to show my ID, um, I'd say 90% of the time, the person I show it to, they um, are native. They say, oh, well, I'm native. I could be in California, Oregon, New York, Florida. They're, they say, well, I'm native, um, you know, and we're Cherokee. And a lot of times they would tell me that they had a Cherokee princess in their family. And it was just, it's striking to me that when people, you know, and these are people who, I don't know, maybe stories have been passed down, you know, in their family and these kind of things, but it's always Cherokee, you know, that they, they tell me that they are. They never tell me that they're another tribe. And so, um, you know, I think the myth of the Cherokee princess um, has misled a lot of people, you know, to where, um, you know, they think that this was actually a thing. So before colonizers came, Cherokee people were savage and unsophisticated. Uh, I think a lot of people still think that to this day, um, you know, and that we were somehow saved by um, people, um, you know, instead of all of the things that happened to us, you know, all the adversity that we faced. Um, instead, they look at it like, you know, we were in fact um, saved, you know, and, and were better off for it. Um, which is definitely not the case. Uh, another stereotype is that Cherokees receive special treatment. Um, you know, and I hear this a lot, you know, um, whether it's with gaming, um, per capita, uh, ICWA, you know, and people don't understand the fact that, you know, things like ICWA um, were created because, uh, you know, a lot of our native children were being ta forcefully taken out of native homes. Um, it's happened to a lot of Cherokees also. And, um, you know, so that was created to protect us. And it's not about race. Um, it has to do with tribal membership and it has to do with our culture, protecting our culture and protecting the ability to pass that culture on to future generations. Um, a lot of people also assume that Cherokees are all assimilated and do not practice their culture. Uh, you know, this is definitely not true. We have many... Um, operational stomp grounds. We have many artists. We have a Cherokee language immersion school. We have a very vibrant culture. And I'm very, um, you know, thankful for that. I'm thankful for the, our ancestors who um, made sure that we did have that culture that was passed down to us. And now we can pass that down to our children as well. Um, I'm also thankful to our tribal leadership who makes that a priority, um, you know, who invests in that. That's really awesome. So um, some of the ramifications, um, you know, from these stereotypes, um, you'll see uh, by lumping natives all into one group instead of recognizing that we are all unique tribes serves to discount our value and contribution to society. This thinking has led to tribal governments being treated as hostile foreigners on their own land. So I think um, one example of that is that, you know, we saw recently with the issue around gaming in Oklahoma, um, you know, instead of seeing native um, governments, tribal governments as sovereign, as partners, you know, in this, in, a, in the state, they took on a real ad adversarial role. And so it just, you, you could see the talks just completely broke down where I think a lot of good could have come out of it. Instead, that, that kind of thinking and that kind of, um, you know, um, treating us as hostile um, was to the detriment of Oklahoma, um, you know. So um, this argument is also used to delegitimize those trying to protect Cherokee interests, including ICWA. So, um, you know, like I said, these do have um, real um, ramifications, uh, you know, in the real world, uh, you know, we're seeing that. Um, these do need to be addressed. And so um, I'm, uh, I'm excited, like I said, um, you know, because um, the, the fact that we're even able to be here and talk about this um, shows that we are making progress. So um, what can we do? Um, first of all, we can do our part and not stereotype others or feed into stereotypes of ourselves. Um, this is a big one that I have, I make sure I do in my own life. You know, I, um, you know, make sure to treat others how I want to be treated. 
So if I do not appreciate stereotypes about myself, I have to make sure that I'm not feeding into them about other people um, as well. Um, we can support native artists, musicians, filmmakers, painters, et cetera. Uh, this is a big one because this is, you know, I do believe in our stories being told by us. I think that's a really big deal. I'm really tired of seeing non-natives telling native stories because there's a lot that you miss um, if you do not come from our culture, from our viewpoint. Um, so um, this is a really big one. Um, I'm excited to see um, you know, a lot of our youth who are, who are native um, artists and I'm excited to support them uh, in their endeavors. And that's another one, mentor youth, like I was talking about with the, um, you know, the great event that they had yesterday. There were a hundred youth on there who were really excited, you know, in learning how to become leaders. And, um, you know, this is the future of our people. And so um, definitely if you guys get a chance, uh, make sure you, you um, take the opportunity um, to mentor our native youth and give them a helping hand and give them guidance. Um, many of you know I'm a recovering alcoholic. Um, I have over eight years sober. Um, and I contribute a lot of that because a lot of people mentored me. They helped me. I have people who continue to mentor me to this day, um, whether it's in our culture, uh, in our language. And so I think, um, you know, they say it takes a village. You know, I think it really does. So um, that's really exciting to see um, a lot of our fellow tribal members to mentor the youth. Vote, um, this is a big one uh, because we do need more politicians who support our interests. And now we're seeing more um, native, uh, natives who are running for office. And so whenever we do get those people out there who support our interests, uh, we have to make sure we take the time to vote. Support causes you believe in. Uh, this is a big one, um, you know, um, so make sure, you know, we're out there. If we see native youth doing something positive, if we see a group doing positive, um, you know, the big one I see now is um, native comedians. Um, you know, I think it's a lot different when a native joke is told by a native and we can have fun. We do have humor. We do find humor in a lot of these things. But I think if, if it's um, our people, who are able to tell that story um, in a comedic way, I think that makes all the difference. Um, so if we stereotype others or feed into those about us, then we help to continue the cycle. Um, we need more stories about our people by our people. The youth need our help to continue to break cycles and build upon the progress we have made. And then, like I said, a rec record number of native candidates ran for office this cycle. So, um, you know, this is all really exciting. Um, you know, I think it's, um, it's a, an exciting time um, to be Cherokee right now. Um, you know, and once again, I just, I'm really thankful for our ancestors and everything that they were able to do um, for us in their lifetime. And um, lastly, the Cherokee Nation website has form letters that can be filled out and sent in to, sh to show your support. So uh, if there's a cause that you believe in, um, make sure you, you go to the website um, because they do have form letters. It's already all filled out. You just put your name in there and then send it off um, to show your support, you know, for things like uh, making sure they see our delegate to Congress or making sure to show that you support ICWA, uh, making sure that we, you know, are represented in that way. Uh, I think we'll, we'll make a big difference. So you can see here, um, you know, a lot, you know, it would take me, I, whenever I looked up, you know, native authors, I looked up, um, you know, Native American TV shows, I looked up um, Native American politicians. There was a ton that popped up. I mean, I could feel a thousand screens with all of the native authors that popped up and, and everything like that. And I just picked a couple here. And that's really awesome to see that representation. Um, you know, to see, uh, you know, here you have Brad Wagnon's book. Um, the first fire. Cherokees um, writing stories about Cherokees. I, I love our story being told by us. And you see here we have, um, you know, Osio, um, you know, Voices of the Cherokee People. I love watching their short stories about our people. Um, you know, that's really good. And then you see um, here are some of our representatives, um, you know, in Congress. 
Um, so we are standing on the shoulders of giants. I really believe that, you know, I'm really humbled by all of the progress our ancestors made and all of the sacrifices that they made for us. Um, you know, in, in film, in music, in media, um, in Congress, I remember growing up and I heard the name Ben Nighthorse Campbell. And um, it was just astonishing to me that um, one of our own was um, able to represent us um, in Congress in that way. And it's a big deal. Um, it, it raised my self-esteem, you know? And so um, I think, um, you know, by, by people taking that healthy risk, um, getting out there, I see on Facebook, a lot of people have a lot of great ideas if they would just trust themselves more to get out there and write a book, um, shoot the documentary, make that music, uh, you know, I, I think um, we're going to be a lot better off for it. And it just shows, you know, all of the opportunities that are out there. If we do trust ourselves, trust our voice um, to get out there and tell our own um, authentic stories. I think, um, you know, there's no limit um, to what the future could hold for our children. Um, so, you know, we do have unprecedented representation at various levels, uh, you know, and that's really awesome to see. Uh, we have a Native American Secretary of the Interior. I never imagined that. And, you know, it's just, it's unimaginable. So that's really, you know, it's awesome to, to, to see that I can still have my mind blown, you know, and uh, to see that, um, you know, our Native people going out and taking this huge risk. You know, I remember, uh, you know, a lot of people know my aunt, um, Wilma Mankiller represented our tribe. And she took a lot of heat for that. You know, there were death threats. Um, people would spray paint, you know, the road um, to the house. Um, you know, all these kinds of things. Um, but she did it because she felt like she could help. And, um, you know, it takes an enormous amount of courage. So when we do see um, these people, our youth who come out and um, want to run for office or want to write a book, um, let's make sure we, we give them encouraging words. We give them the tools um, that they need to succeed. And I think that, you know, we're doing a great job of that um, to see how much um, our tribe invests in education, uh, you know, to make sure that our, our youth who do have these aspirations have the tools, um, the opportunity and access, um, you know, to accomplish those dreams. Um, like I said, our Cherokee, our, you know, delegate to Congress, um, you know, that's a big deal. And we can support her, um, you know, like I said, they have those form letters, um, you know, on, um, on the website. And, um, you know, make sure if you do have an opportunity to tune in to um, on, you know, um, on the Thursdays um, when she gives her update, um, her, um, her update about, about what's going on. And um, it's really good to hear. And um, it's just really inspiring to hear, um, to know that we have a Cherokee out there you know, representing, representing us at that way, um, you know, uh, to the United States government. Um, and then, you know, like I said, we have a lot of native authors and directors giving accurate portrayals of our history and stories. And um, that is, that's really awesome to see, um, you know, uh, Cynthia Ruiz, um, you know, we have a, a, a ton of native authors out there. And, um, you know, I'm just, um, I can't wait to see the books our youth are going to write. You know, I can't wait to see the TV shows they're going to write. Um, you already see on YouTube, um, there are little Cherokee kids making YouTube videos. And it's just, it's, it's amazing to me. Um, it's just really inspiring. Um, it almost, it makes me choked up because, um, you know, if our ancestors could see all of the, the beautiful things, um, that our youth are doing, I think um, they would be very proud today. So um, once again, it's just, it's really awesome to see, you know, even though we are um, underrepresented a lot, we are represented in a negative way sometimes, there is more good than bad happening. And uh, that's because of the healthy risks that all of you decide to take. And I mean, it starts with you. Um, actually, you know, with me also, um, I had the opportunity to co-author a book and there was so much that went through my mind. Who am I to do that? All these things. And I had, um, you know, um, it's actually Cynthia Ruiz who, you know, spoke strong words to me and, um, you know, pretty much called me out and said, you know, you 
you know, who made me made me feel that strength of our ancestors. And that strength goes um, not just through myself. It runs in all of our veins. Uh, that strength um, of our ancestors have made it through so much adversity. And now we get to be here with one another um, to share in our culture and to share our stories and do all of those things. Um, it's really, really awesome to see. So um, another big thing is make sure you get out there and vote. That is a great way to represent yourself. Um, a lot of, for many, many years, our people have been um, really disenfranchised when it comes to the political um, arena, uh, when it comes to politics, when it comes to voting. And, um, you know, I think we've seen with this election cycle, um, you know, we're being mentioned for the first times. I hear people now talk about indigenous voting, indigenous voting block. And it's just really um, awesome to see our people get out there and, and, and let people know um, what's important to them. Let people know what their values are. You know, I don't care which way you vote. Um, you know, um, but just make sure that you get out there and make sure that your voice is heard. I think it's a, a, a great way to uh, make sure that we have more representation. So, um, you know, that's all I have today. You know, I just, that's the biggest thing, you know, just make sure that we are supporting each other and let's make sure our voice is heard. Let's give our youth the tools that they need and not just our youth. Um, I'm getting to be an elder statesman and I've just now started <laughs> thinking about writing and, and doing all these things. So yeah, not just the youth, let's make sure we, we're, um, you know, um, supporting our, our, our fellow native elders, you know, who want to get out there and, you know, write a book or do a documentary or be a part of our TV show or, or any of these things. Um, I think anytime we get out there and represent native people in an authentic, um, true way, we are winning, you know, no matter what because it, it, it helps us in the long run. It gives those people who ordinarily have, do not have access to native people. Um, it, it lets them know, you know, um, that we are just like you guys. You know, we have families, um, you know, we have struggles, we have jobs, um, we have degrees, we have great artists, we have songs, you know, and I think um, anytime, you know, in my experience, anytime I've shared those with other people who are not native, it has just really, um, you know, a lot of good has come of it. Um, and, you know, they appreciate it, you know, um, as well as, you know, I appreciated myself, you know, the opportunity to tell that story. So um, with that, um, we'll see if we have any questions. Um, if you guys have any questions or um, if you guys have any comments, um, you know, welcome to, uh, we'll open it up right now. So I just want to say once again, what oh everybody, I appreciate you guys being with us today, and I hope you have a great day. Abraham? Yes. Hey, this is Donnie. I finally got to join you. Hey. Um, thank you for putting this together. It's so much more than what I pictured. and That's why it's good to, that you're on board, because we can work as a team, because my title was just Cherokees and Stereotypes, you know, and then you just took <laughs> it to a whole other level, and that's why it's good to have you know, more people with their eyes on these and, and doing these presentations. And so, uh, and with this topic, you could almost do a series on this and take one stereotype at a time, you know, and mm -hmm. talk about it. And uh, because there are so many out there and I just want to, uh, you know, kind of repeat some of the things you've said until I started traveling, I didn't know that people had these these beliefs about Cherokee people. Mm -hmm. And um, and one of the things I've heard the most is that we don't really have a real culture anymore. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we do. We have our language. We have our medicines. Mm -hmm. We have ceremonies, you know, and we have our national treasures that carry on some of those rare, you know, uh, crafts and arts and things like that. I mean, we definitely have a culture and culture also means behaviors and beliefs and values mm -hmm. and you know how just how we even interact with one another what we can expect from one another and you know it's it, so we definitely have a culture intact and so that was really surprising um, to me as I've traveled to different places and gone to conferences and that that was the perception of Cherokee people 
Mm-hmm. And it's certainly not true. Our culture is intact. You know, we're mm-hmm. all working hard to bring things back. And what I've said to our uh, people across the country as I've gotten to travel and, and get to know our people that live even outside of Oklahoma, that uh, they all carry pieces of our culture. And it's like a big puzzle um, that I feel like we're putting the pieces back together Mm -hmm. because everybody, you know, when people left to go live in other areas, they didn't leave the culture behind. Mm -hmm. They took things with them and passed those things down to people as well and their families and their communities. And so I, you know, I tell people, look at Look at the way you do things sometimes. And if there's anything you do that's a little bit different from everybody else, that could be a Cherokee thing. Uh, The way you have uh, gatherings and celebrations and, you know, those sort of things. And so, you know, really think on those things and evaluate those things. What could really be Cherokee in terms of behavior and celebrations and values and you know, if there's ever a time you go, I don't quite fit with the rest of society, it could be a Cherokee thing, you know, yeah. and so um, it's good to reflect on those things. And, you know, there's so many things that people have taken from other tribes, even, and they call it Pan-Indian, where we all sort of have adopted a certain way of doing things. Um, I always use the example of the dream catcher. You know, Cherokees, again, we have, we still have our own plant medicines and spiritual medicines, but the dream catcher has been adopted by a lot of tribal people Mm -hmm. uh, and really around the world. You know, those things are mass produced now in other countries. And, but the dream catcher is a, it's Ojibwa medicine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and we were connected to the Ojibwa at one time in our history, uh, our oral history tells us that. And so it's just an example of how something can be taken and put out there and, and, uh, and people not even really understand where it comes from, Mm -hmm. who it belongs to and what its true meaning is. And so, um, and so there's, that's just one example of, of a a piece of culture that, um, that is, uh, you know, people need to know those things, where they come from, mm-hmm. and that uh, that we Cherokee, we have our own ways of dealing. You know, a dream catcher is supposed to capture dreams and give you good sleep and things like that and peace, but we have our own medicines and our own medicine mm-hmm. people that know how to, to do those things as well. And so that's just one example of why I think it's important that we examine those things that we, we that we understand what is Cherokee and what isn't. And so we can teach those things to other people just for accuracy and to also honor other tribal uh, people as well. Make sure that we tell their stories, you know, when we have the opportunity and give credit where credit is due, so to speak. So, so thank you for doing this. Um, you put a, together a wonderful presentation and again, I know you called, if anybody had any questions or comments, you know, now's a, now's a good time. It looks like under chat, there's about 11 comments there. We will definitely answer your questions as best we can. And you can always email Abraham or Donnie or I, uh, and we will gladly uh, help you as best we can. Yay. Well, do everyone. Wado, everyone. Wado, everybody have a great day. Do da go high.